You're listening to Hooked on Startups, where every week you'll hear from some of the most talented, inspiring, and successful entrepreneurs who share their real life stories, how they overcame challenges and failures, and how they mastered success. Get ready for some of the best business tips, tricks and tactics, and some frank, unscripted discussions. Here's your host, Matthew Sullivan. Today, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by uh, Will Henshaw. So, Will, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Matthew. Delighted to be here. Well, actually not here. I am here, but on the show here anyway. No, we are, we're all here. It is this sort of <laughs> omnipresence. Yeah. Wherever you are, there you are, right? It, it, exactly. And, uh, you know, th- thank God for, uh, for this fantastic modern technology, which... Um, apart from destroying our lives and making us completely unable to focus on anything, this is still a, a wonderful uh, you know, medium. Um, but let me tell you a bit about Will. So Will, you're a five times entrepreneur. Yes. Uh, you're the founder of uh, Focus at Will, and I can't wait to get stuck in to talk about that. Um, so Focus at Will is a, um, I think it's best described as a neuroscience-based web tool to help you concentrate. Um, so it uses specially composed instrumental. I'm not even going to attempt to explain it because you're going to do a a much better job. Um, But uh, for those of you watching this on video, you can see there is a sea of platinum and gold discs on the wall behind Will. Um, So Will, you're a scientist, you're a musician, you're a songwriter, uh, you're a technology inventor. And I think the best way of describing what you do is you work with audio to find the right music for the right place at the right time. Is that a... Yes. Um, and, yes. Uh, and exactly. Uh, as we were saying before, I was, uh, you know, Will, you're the uh, founder of uh, the British pop soul band London Beat. Yes, you can see it right here behind me, London Beat. Which is, uh, again, one of, the, uh, uh, you know, one of the songs I grew up with that is still, you know, pulsating <laughs> around my mind. I'm not sure if I have to have it surgically removed at some point, but it is, you know, one of my all-time favorite songs. So, well, um, people watching this in the, in the United States, uh, if you've ever been to a uh, Home Depot or a Lowe's hardware store, the chances of hearing a London Beat song are extremely high for some reason. <laughs> London Beat is on super high rotation still. There's, there's uh, four singles that are released in the USA, and all four of them get played um, in, in Home Depot. And I, I guess they've, there's been some separate research that's, that's discovered that that makes people buy more screwdrivers or something. <laughs> or, or some high-value item. <laughs> Play that and we'll sell more air conditioners. I went in and bought something recently, and the girl was singing along. It happened to come on, one of the songs came on while I was checking out. And she was singing along with a song, distracted while I was trying to pay. I was like, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's one of those things that you just can't write. No, that's. that's um... <laughs> but back to back to the folks at Will um, uh, business. Yeah, it, 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 the basis of it is that um, when when you're working um, in uh, in an open office and. Um, uh, <clears throat> about half of the workforce in North America and Europe work in an open office. Um, in the UK, it's called an open plan office, but it's an open office here in the States. And um, if you're under 30, it's 80 to 85% of the people who work, uh, work sit with everybody else. So there's a lot of noise. You got to get something done. What you're going to do, you're going to reach for the headphones. Great. So what you've done is you've blocked out the noise and you put some music on. But here's what's happening. If you then listen to music you like, of any type, London Beat or <laughs> Snoop or whoever, it doesn't matter, um, it's actually going to distract your attention. So you've, you've replaced one problem with another problem. And now what's happening is the back of your brain, the back of your mind is actually listening to the music and distracting you. So the, you know, the quick takeaway is this. Yeah. Don't listen to music you like when you're trying to work because it's going to divide your attention. Particularly don't listen to music with lyrics of any description, any vocals, because your, your brain is hardwired to listen to the sound of a human voice and, and, and to, to notice is if I hear a sound behind me now, I'm going to be saying, is that, is that danger or reward? Is that someone going to hurt me or is that someone bringing me a sandwich? Right? So this, this, this reflex is in all of our brains. And when you listen to music with vocals in, you pay attention to it because of that, re- the, of that response in the brain. But that's completely counterintuitive. 
So in other words, it is. You, you imagine there's, there's a few other things as well that I, I guess you found are quite astonishing on your journey as you're sort of looking into the yes. science behind this. But so for me to sit there, I, I just imagine rows of these sort of Facebook developers who are all kind of plugged in. Mm-hmm. But what they're actually doing, if they're listening to music that has vocals, they're triggering these sort of fight or flight responses, which means that they're actually being less productive. And yes. what you've discovered is that the science behind it, um, and, and you, you've found ways of kind of tuning into the productive layers, as it were. Yeah, the way it works is that everybody is different. Everybody's brain type, everybody's personality type is different. And you could think of it as, um, as a sort of a, a scale. At one end, you've got someone who's really hyper, ADD, tweaky, distracted, yeah. talking about Facebook developers, for instance. Actually, Folks at Will has a, a large number of tech workers sure. in Silicon Valley from, from companies, you know, Google, Apple, Facebook. Uh, are, are our users. And um, so at the one end, you've got tweaky, tweaky, really kind of distracted. And then at the other end, you've got people who are just calm, like the Dalai Lama. Yes. Right. And, we, and we've got friends that are just like that. We've yes. got friends who are super chill. And then we've got friends who are really hyper. And that is where they kind of sit on this scale. And ironically, just because someone is chill or hyper, I'm using non yeah, yeah. terms for this, uh, doesn't actually... Uh, mean they are more or less uh, productive yes it's really interesting and tell us i was just about to say typically people who are more hyper tend to be more um creative and more productive it's an interesting thing so in a typical company your most valuable employees will be the more easily distracted and the other interesting thing that you found is the music type so if you've got someone who, let, take an ADD example, for example, yeah. someone, you know, the, the Chihuahua versus the Dalai Lama. Mm-hmm. So you've got this Chihuahua sitting there. Naturally, you would assume that to calm them down and to make them focus, you want some classical music, maybe a right. bit of rock. Did you find that was the case? Chill out. Yeah, totally. So if someone's uh, completely distracted all the time, intuitively what you want to do is, as you say, ambient music. Just the sound of water, just yes. nice classical. Guess what? Completely 180 degrees wrong. Now, that was the eye-opener when we, we yep. realized this. Wait a minute. The more easily distracted you are, the more crazy stuff you need to hear in the audio, the more energy. Um, we met someone when we were doing the tests on this. We're, we're funded by uh, Singularity University, which is funded by Google, yep. uh, which is Peter Diamandis and, and Ray uh, Kurzweil's uh, university. And through them, we had all kinds of fascinating people uh, in our early tests. And uh, one of the guys was a, um, uh, a well-known Google engineer. And he used to, he was really hyper. And he used to listen to lots of things at the same time. It was crazy. <laughs> he used to listen to heavy metal in one ear, yeah. um, really industrial goth in the other ear. He'd have a ball game on, the BBC, and something else, all happening at the same time. Yeah. And just be absolutely calm with all of this distraction around it. Yeah. And combination of a kind of conversations with, with a few people like that. And um, one of our early science advisors uh, uh, started uh, with us is a guy called Dr. Ned Hallowell, who's the world expert on ADHD. Yes. And conversations with him uh, were very interesting. He said, well, we know that taking stimulants Ritalin, Adderall, right? yep. it's, it's stimulants, it's, it's amphetamines, calms people down if they have ADD. Crazy, yeah. And I was like, that's interesting because I know, and that's to do with the way the brain gets overclocked, and I, I yep. won't go into the science of it, but <clears throat> it overclocks the brain so you're able to concentrate. Yeah. But when I observed these developers and a few people that uh, Ned Hallowell, Dr. Hallowell, introduced us to, I thought, you know what they're doing? They're using audio, these incredibly stimulating audio things to do the same thing. Yep. And that led us into this whole path into, hmm, can we test that? And we did. We find that, so on the folks that will system, there are many different channels, including a specific channel for people with ADHD. And it sounds extremely noisy. And, and but this is an amazing, <coughs> excuse me, journey where, so, so how did you, what was the moment where you thought, hang on, we can make a business out of this? 
was was there that sort of like a, a singular moment where that 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 interest in um, and concentration music because again it is so counterintuitive. And I think this is a very important point because a lot of businesses are staring you in the face. Yes, and they're leveraging all of your skills, but it's actually the opposite to what you think it is. So so you miss it. Mm-hmm. So, but how did you suddenly go? Wait a minute. This is the business. We found that there are almost no existing pieces of music in in the music sphere that will work properly. That was the moment. And the reason why is, listen, this is a, you can, for anybody on, on just audio, I am pointing behind me at the bunch of gold yes. records here on the wall. So I had a previous career, as did uh, uh, John Vitale, both of us had a career in pop music production. This yep. is making songs that you hear on the radio. Yep. And they used to say, my publisher used to say to me, don't bore us, get to the chorus. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I've been yeah. thinking about you, right? You, yeah. There it is, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I, I worked with Dave Stewart from the Eurythmics uh, of course, for a couple I mean. of years too, and everybody remembers, sweet dreams are made yes. of. I yeah. came up through that world of pop music. Yeah. Don't ignore this. How can you get a song that is very, very catchy? So any, any um, successful music of any type is designed to do that. Everything, whether it's Snoop yeah. Dogg, Miles Davis, Beethoven, yes. da, 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 right? It's yeah. designed to engage you. And that's why you like it. So we found that if you play music in the background, even if it's got a lot of energy in it to help manage your ADD, yes. it's designed to have you listen to it and engage. And you engage with music in lots of ways. You, you engage uh, spiritually if it's, if it's uh, devotional music. Yeah. Uh, dance music makes you physically move. Jazz touches you intellectually and emotionally. All music has this way. Rap music it t- hits you on a very physical, intimate way. The lyrics are often very... Um, you, you hard to snoop, for instance, snoop, you can't ignore this. That's why yes. it's so successful. Yeah. So we found that when we were trying to put together instrumental music that would work for this process, there was almost nothing out there. Yeah. It was crazy. You know, there's something like 30 million available pieces of music now today that you could find if you go on to the music services and they're all designed to engage you to be listened to. So your question was, how do we turn this into business? That's when John Vitale, my co-founder and myself went, you know, we're going to have to remix, remaster, re-edit, commission a new library. Of yeah. material. And that's what we did. But that's the challenge, isn't it? So just from a, um, it's similarities to all sorts of other businesses where you know, the founders, the, the entrepreneurs have an idea. Mm-hmm. But then you're faced with this sort of, um, this tidal wave of, um, self-doubt and naysayers and um you know you're effectively reinventing elements of the music industry we are we um yeah we've actually created um what may be the only uh successful um online streaming independent music service uh, out there and um you know if you just said to me sort of six years ago you're going to be running a music streaming service i like everybody else would have been like how how the hell is that going to work yeah but it actually does because it has a very specific purpose it's not for entertainment this is a tool you use to work yeah it's to use music to affect to affect your brain and to give you the results that it needs and <clears throat> because none of the music that we use has any other use apart from this use. Yeah. That's why we have a business. And in fact, if you listen to Focus at Will while you've got a party going at home, you'll find it's kind of flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Right? It's kind of, yeah. it's a bit boomy. It, the the up-tempo channel that we have doesn't have any DJ drops. It doesn't yes. have any vocals in it. It's just like, goes, and then yeah. the idea of this is you hit the timer, it plays the music, the timer goes again, you, have, you set it to whatever, most people set 90 minute sessions. You don't notice the music while it's working, you just stay in the groove. And we tell people, when you've finished <laughs> your work in the car or when you're going back on the subway, put 
your headphones in and listen to music you like. <laughs> this is but, not music you like. But how did you get, uh, how did you get the initial uptake? So you have this idea and obviously you have the background and the technical knowledge from all of the amazing work that you've done in the past. You have a very supportive partner um, and sort of business partner, but at what point, how did you get that initial traction? Um, and how did you, did you get over that sort of, uh, that feeling that, you know, we are really on the bleeding edge here, not just the cutting edge. We raised, um, about 2 million bucks to build this system. The, the system mechanically is very similar to Pandora. Yeah. What I mean okay. by mechanically is Pandora has a, a number of music files, you know, many, many music files. And then they have their secret sources, the algorithm that plays individual playlists based yeah. on your preferences, right? Yeah. That's the way that works. And, and Pandora <clears throat> spent $22, $24 million in building that system. Right, that's what they did. Yep. We built a system that does almost the same from scratch using our patented server tech yep. that looks at all of our files and then plays people individual versions of those based on the meta tagged tracks. Yep. It, as I said, we did it just on a shoestring with like six of us in a back room and, and then my uh, CTO co-founder is... Um, his name is Graham Lias. We've been through two or three other startups. He's a genius. Yeah. Um, I'm, a, I'm a software designer and architect, uh, and we've, we've done all kinds of other things together. So we were able to build the first version of this system. Yeah. And what we did was we, we literally um, threw it out there on the internet in, in 2013, in January 2013, and we said, hey, we got this free system. So we yep. did it for free. Um, we, uh, we, we just need beta testing. We have yeah, a closed yeah. system. We uh, rapidly, we did some PR. We launched at the CES. We did some PR, paid for a PR agency. And we got about 22,000 users in six wow. months. Wow. And they were very active. And yeah. we, they were our guinea pigs. <laughs> we do crazy stuff. Uh, we'd, we'd, we'd try a new channel and then we'd get people in the lab. We, we have some brainwave machines. Uh, we're partly funded by... One of our other investors is Thought Technology, who yeah. make the EEG, EKG machine. Wow, okay. Use. Um, Dr. Hal Meyer is, uh, is the, uh, the founder and, and <clears throat> a close advisor of the company. With his help, we were able to get people in a lab and see what happens in your brain. That became another problem because I don't know if you've ever come across EEG or brain measuring stuff. The human brain is very complicated. Yep. And you'd think what you could do is stick a brainwave machine on and see whether someone's focusing or not. Yes. Not remotely. <laughs> <laughs> There's not the focus node, I guess. <laughs> oh, here's what had to happen. Um, these devices give out about a terabyte of uh, raw data a minute or something like this. It's an wow. insane amount of stuff. So like a 30 minute session, you've got 30 terabytes. It's just this massive amount of raw data. And now, uh, I had to hire a team of PhDs to look at this raw data. Yeah. And it was just, um, I talk about, I said to the, the first guy I hired, I, I said, um, what I'm trying to do is look at how focused this person is when we're playing them all the different sorts of music. I said, can you help me find the needle in the haystack? He said, well, I want to look at that metaphor. Yeah. The, uh, the needle in the haystack we don't know the field. We don't know which field the haystack's in. There's lots of haystacks in. Actually, yeah. we don't even know the farm that the haystack. Actually, we don't even know the. Actually, we don't even know which country the needle is in the haystack of the farm. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So, but it's the answer's in there somewhere. <laughs> yes, and after an insane amount of mucking around and a lot of money, yes. uh, we figured it out. There's a part of the brain, um, at the part of the back of the brain, where you can actually look for. Um, <clears throat> it's called P3 and 4 uh, in the back of the brain where you can actually measure a tiny but, but noticeable change uh, in the EEG of the brain. And then that set us on a, a long journey in terms of, okay, great. So finally we can quantify this. But on that journey though, so y y you start with, with this sort of idea and then you, you raise capital, which is a massive achievement in its own right. Yeah. Um, and, you run the business as a bootstrap, so you don't 
splurge your capital so so you no. you you run the business properly which again is a lesson in its own right yeah you then get your proof of concept you get your twenty two thousand subscribers mm-hmm. but i guess then talking of pandora you're opening a pandora's box as it were yeah. because yeah. then presumably you're beginning to understand now more about how people focus what distracts people? So it's, it's not just about playing music to keep you focused. Are you uncovering all sorts of uncharted areas of, of human psychology through this exercise? Yes. Um, it's been fascinating. Um, we have a science director called Dr. Julia Mossbridge. Uh, she's been with us for a couple of years. And um, <clears throat> with her help, we've, we've done a lot of research into... Um, why people do certain things yeah. and what part of the brain engages you. Uh, and the, the quick takeaway is fascinating that music and audio in particular is unique. That when you hear a sound, when you hear music, it goes in your brain and it goes straight to your brain core, to your limbic yeah. system. You don't think about it. Right now, if you hear a piece of music by Led Zeppelin, ABBA, <laughs> we have a sort of similar, similar age here, so I presume something. Oh, so the that, genres are different, but I get what right. you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you hear a piece of music that came on when you were a kid, you'll be taken straight back. Yes, exactly. No, you're right. You can't help it. You'll just feel it. It'll be a feeling. Yes. So music shortcuts the brain, the thinking brain, and gives you a feeling. That is why music is so successful, which is why people go to see a gig because they're wanting to get the feelings. You see you too, it gives you this feeling of whatever that is for you. Um, and, and so f- sort of developing from that, is there, um, I mean, obviously as the focus at will business develops, do you see yourself sort of moving into other areas of, of I, you know, time management, which is, is, is a crazy yeah, sort of narrow it. focus, but that type of thing, being able to um, understand more about what makes people tick. And so to be able to feed that back to them to say, if you do this, um, one of the we things have, you- we have a new uh, app, which just got launched. It's being uh, spread out. Uh, we've got one and a half million users on the system and it's being, um, being dripped out to everybody this week. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah, this week, complete, yeah. Yeah, it's a completely new look and feel of the app. Yeah. And it has an upgraded productivity tracker in it. We've been asked a lot about this. So once you've run a session on Focus at Will, uh, after 20 minutes, uh, a session on the 20 minutes, the pop-up says, how productive were you during that? And yeah. then you can, you, can, you can look at the scale between you know, zero and, and 100. And then there's actually a, a, um, <clears throat> a chart uh, of your week and you can see I was most productive then I was not so productive here I was uh, so you can actually get a sense of how productive you are and this is a feature which we're continuing to work on actually because I think that's incredibly exciting because what you're doing is you're sort of layering science onto what has been metaphysics up until this point with and there are so many yeah. people that have theories about how do you become more productive things like don't look at your email or look yes. at your email write a list don't write a list yes you know, the, the snake oil salesman almost and what you're doing is you're coming in and you're yes. saying okay well, let's look at the science of this and has that been done before we um we we've done three major um research projects in the last 18 months and the the second one was fascinating one of the questions we i wanted to know is if you feel focused and productive, are you actually yes. being focused and productive? Yeah. So we, we did a series of, of, of uh, somewhat standard psychology tests as part of this. We had uh, 2,500 people go through this, which is a large scale test. And we were measuring how focused they actually were doing these tests, <clears throat> doing uh, l- different ways sometimes sure. with, um, with, with machines, you know, with brain machines, yeah. um, with EEG machines, and sometimes with standardized tests to do with timing and efficiency and, and a bunch of other things. And we were looking into, and we were, we were, stand- we were randomizing for age and gender and, and education, a few other things. And we found there is a strong correlation between how effective or how focused you were and how effective and focused you felt you were and it turns out there's a very strong correlation so if i say to you matthew you know i think i was really focused during that last hour i was yes so 
we found then that it's kind of effective that at the end of a session, it says, how focused were you? It's kind of accurate. <laughs> and also, it's almost, it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy, which comes back to the very right. fun. I mean, I, I was rereading Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich the other day, and right. you know, the opening paragraphs Classic. are, you know, you, I think you can sum up an apologist in Napoleon Hill, but you can sum up the book by saying, you know, you are what you think you are. Yes. And, and, and are you finding that there's almost more scientific evidence for this? Um, that if you can somehow get yourself into a state where you feel productive or you feel positive, that that, that, that really has a direct correlation to what happens. I'm just going to, um, right now, I'm going to uh, run a channel on the system. I'm going to put the speaker here. You'll hear this. So, sorry, I'll just, I'll just run the timer this time. Ready? Yep. I've just turned that off. Yeah. Um, you could hear there was a ding. Yes. Right? That ding has been very carefully considered and tested. And what happens is a Pavlovian response. It is. And, and I've noticed that, yeah. Oh, you, did, you use it? I, I've listened. I've, I've, and I, I've listened to all your well, and all uh -huh. tracks. There's about 20,000 of them. But, <laughs> but when you hear that ding, it's almost like uh -huh. and relax or and focus. So that's that's yes. astonishing. And we've, again, we've measured that. You hear the ding and it already t tells you you're getting into the, getting into the uh, mindset. Yes. So, yes, we can. We can. Um, I wouldn't say fool or trick ourselves, but we can condition ourselves as humans that you have to work. And, you know, you asked me a question earlier, which, which is, you know, why did I do this? What was the point? And, and the answer is really similar, actually, uh, really simple. I wanted to create uh, a system that would help us be better humans. Yes. I want us to be able to be more effective when we're working. Yeah. Don't waste our time. If we've all done this where you sit down and seven hours later, you didn't really do anything and you just kind of wasted the day. Time is precious. And one thing we never get back. So I wanted to create a tool that without having to do anything, you don't have to train. It's not like one of those brain game things. No, no, nothing. Don't listen to music you like. Listen to this. It'll help you get on and live a better life. And it'll help you be more efficient. If you're an entrepreneur, you can earn more, you can be, you know, do better ideas, you can be more creative. And if you're at work, you know, when times get tough, the people that don't let go are the people who are reliable, efficient, yes. <laughs> productive, you know. And that's right. And, but, but the other important thing is that this is not an idea. It's not something that you're, it's not something that you're sort of positing as a, as a potential. Right. It's something that is, you've been mm -hmm. out running this six, seven years now? Six years and one and a half million users, yeah. One and a half million users, which means you have data. Mm -hmm. And I know that your, um, I think your rule of thumb is that <clears throat> two out of three people will be positively affected. It's a bit like hypnosis, I guess, to a certain extent. Yeah. Some people, it just doesn't work. That's right. Um, but then two out of three will be, have some, um, noticeable change and one out of three, it'll be like a sledgehammer in a very positive sense. Yeah. There's one person in three who tries this is like, Oh my God, I have, can't believe I, I, I get, I'm, you know, my email is will at focuswill.com. You can imagine I, I yes. get, I get like 5,000 mails a day and, uh, I have a couple of people obviously yeah. <laughs> on yeah. staff who help yeah. me manage that. And the one person out of three is like, Oh my God. It's and an amazing. person out of three is like, this is the most stupid thing I ever did. It's <laughs> but, which, but, the, but, the, but the great thing there is just the, um, uh, but as I said, it's that sort of pathway uh -huh. um, that, uh, that, you know, that, that you're on now, and particularly in an environment where we are just besieged by data and, and there is this general lack of ability to focus. Yes. And, and where um, in, in, in any type of environment, whether you're working for someone or trying to build your own business, yeah. focus and productivity is so critical. Um, and, and 
in an environment where we're pinged by emails every nanosecond. And, you know, so this is a, such a critical thing that you've sort of discovered, I guess. Well, I want to address um, the, the, the actual core, uh, uh, you know, proposition, which this podcast is about, which is like hooked on startups, startups. So as an entrepreneur, by definition, you are easily distracted. By yeah. definition, um, a, a, a quick uh, data point, about 15% of the population have some type of uh, distractibility challenge. Um, as you go through the 15%, you get right up to like really ADD and then at the extreme version, you, you, autism, right? Yes. But the 15% <clears throat> represents people who are... Um, who, 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 as I said, are, are, are more easily distracted. But when you do an overlay on the population as a whole, that 15% also is the most creative, the yeah. most productive, and includes pretty much all of the entrepreneurs you know. Yes. <laughs> Think about Steve Jobs, right? Elon Musk. Oh, my God. He, Elon, he, I've been told by someone who, who, who knows him uh, um, yeah. through his brother. He, he has his day in five minute meetings. Yes. You can book him for five minutes if you can get anywhere near him. You have to learn to speak quickly, presumably. Right. Yes. <laughs> I, I presume if you've got five minutes, you've got one sentence, the follow up, and this is what I propose. Well, is that it? <laughs> but, but I think, the, and again, but the problem there is that you have all these uh, uh, people that are out there. I mean, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. We're right. all entrepreneurs. Right. And, we're and by the way, I think you are clearly in the 15% I'm talking about. <laughs> right. So maybe just on the outside, yeah, just <laughs> scraping in by the skin of my teeth. But, and the issue is that I'm trying to manage my time. I'm trying to be productive every day. You know, the mantra is, at the end of the day, have I, am I happy with my productivity? But yes. so you start out the day, thinking I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to be focused, I'm going to be on topic, on mission. Right. And then, you know, example you gave in one of your interviews, someone doesn't right. turn up. So, okay, so I park myself, I'm the CEO of this business, the founder of that business, and I'm now head of customer care. Yes. And so it is very difficult to, if you subscribe to all of these self-help, you know, do this, this is the way to run your life, it's incredibly difficult uh, and I don't think that that they're actually relevant in some ways because right. um, it is so challenging. You know what I'm saying? To, to, yeah. to try and bifurcate or trifurcate yourself into um, and, yeah. and be focused at the same time. The problem with almost all of the <clears throat> personal development uh, and, and business uh, help books is they assume that what worked for them yeah. works for everybody. You know, the chicken soup great series. Um, Don Schminke, um, I, I'm actually in his new book as, as one of his, um, uh, as one of the subjects that he talks about. There's a chapter about me and the journey here on. on yep. folks. And the thing that we have found, the takeaway uh, in, the, in our research is that actually everybody's different. And what works great for one person will not work for another person in terms of workflow exactly. um in terms of the way they understand and learn you've you've probably heard of the different types of learning you know you've got audio visual and yes. uh, and physical whatever whatever it's called um and as an entrepreneur you you just have to run around as much as you can to be successful as you said i've done five startups now yeah um i i lost my shirt completely on one yep. kind of neutral on another did okay on a th that did did pretty well actually on another one um and i've been doing this for 30 years and <laughs> you know the secret is to its tenacity <laughs> you just, that's it right yeah Don't that is, i agree that's the common thing the thing that comes out of all of this is persistence yeah you know, if someone says, what is the secret to your success? I mean, you know, the natural humility as well, you know, what success, but, right. but you say, well, actually it's, it's 1% inspiration. Mm -hmm. and it's that 99% perspiration. So I completely, it's persistence, it's tenacity. That's the answer. I remember, the, remember there was a story back in the day about uh, the music business. There was a guy who turned down the Beatles. He went to actually see them and he said, guitar bands, just a yeah. fad. They weren't going to be successful. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, and um, he, he said the Beatles, nothing would happen with the Beatles, yeah. which was, uh, I actually, I forget his name. I saw him talking recently and that was his, <laughs> that was the, that was the thing that he was famous for, for turning down the Beatles. Right. Well, <clears throat> Luckily for some, <laughs> the Beatles, they just kept going. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure it was that difficult for them uh, to get going. And I, and I gather they were quite successful. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a crazy story in my own life. Um, Thinking About You, the song that we yeah. talked about earlier on, was released worldwide except the USA. Uh, yeah. Initially. And, it, and it went straight to number one pretty much everywhere. And it hadn't been released yet in the States. Yeah. But it was number one in Canada or all over Europe. It, you know, it, it, and I, the band was touring. We were out. But we'd held back the USA uh, <clears throat> deal for varying reasons. So we, the head of the, the most successful um, uh, A&R person was a guy called Clive Davis from Arista yeah. Records. And he was the guy who was, who was Mr. Radio Ears. He was a guy who'd signed um, Whitney Houston, and he, he's the yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy that knew radio, knew yeah. American radio. So my manager flew to New York, played him this song, yeah. and said, let's talk about a deal. And he said, don't hear it on the radio. <laughs> I think it's going to happen. And so we smiled and left the office. Yeah. It had already been number one in 15 countries and in Canada, which is just over there. Just next door, yeah. And there was actually a cease and desist on the record in the USA to stop it being imported. Wow. And then we literally went next door to MCA Records. Uh, he was in Arista, MCA. He was on the same block. Yeah. And we met a guy called Al Teller, who was the CEO of, of that. Yeah. And he just looked at us and smiled. And <laughs> we signed a ridiculous deal with him. And of course, yeah. you know, six weeks later, it was number one. Yes. But my, the point of that story is people don't know. This was the guy who was meant to be the world expert exactly. in radio singles at the time. Got it wrong. Exactly. Got it completely wrong. And, and so in, in my career as, a, as an entrepreneur, I see this a lot. You know, it, successful entrepreneurs will give you advice. I've had some terrible advice in Focus at Will from people. Well-meaning. Yeah. I could waste another hour of your time talking about it. Um, Hardly, but I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's that. I know what you mean. It's everyone's got their sort of secret success, but, uh, you know, I think it just boils, boils down to just – can you stick at something? Can, you know, do you have enough belief in what you're doing to, to, it's very difficult to stop someone who is not going to give up. It's also about pivoting and understanding that, um, yes. you know, your initial idea yeah, may yeah. actually be the, 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 the stepping stone for the thing this actually becomes. So it's not being too focused and thinking, this is it, come hell or high water. Um, the Twitter story, if you've not ever heard yeah. that, just, just look it up, the way that um, Twitter was formed and they built this system that was going to recommend music <laughs> yes. as a plug-in to the app, the yeah. music uh, iTunes app, right? And it worked really well. And you could look at this piece of music and it would suggest all these. And then four weeks later, after they'd raised five million bucks, Apple came out with iTunes seven or nine, whatever the number was, and it had <laughs> iTunes Genius, which is exactly the thing that they just raised all the money for. Wow. I can and imagine the stony a, faces in the boardroom that day. <laughs> right. And they said, well, all right, we've got a great team. Who's yeah. got some ideas? Amazing. Amazing. Right. And then Jack came up with this micro blog that has nothing to do with music at all. But that's... And then it became... Yeah. The whole Twitter story is just fascinating. It's a really good example of a pivot, a brilliant pivot. Yeah. And, 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 but having that ability and that, that, that sense of where your market is to be able to say, okay, this isn't working. Let's try this. That's, that's the other. Yeah. Um, I did a pivot in focus at will actually, and, um, talked about it for the first time in, in Don Schminke's book. Yeah. be called his call, His book is called the five destructions. Okay. Uh, Don Schminke here. Yeah. And I talked about it for the first time about, the, the short version is that we started Focus at Will as a music for reading tech. And okay. it used, it used yeah. uh, AI and a few other things to automatically analyze the words on a page and play you music that uh, play in the background while you're reading. And it, didn't work, it worked great, but it turned out to be distracting. And we pivoted the business into music for work and focus. Yes. And um, 
it was a classic example of, oh, that's what we were trying to do. This is what this can be used for. Um, mm. Do you remember Jimi Hendrix? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, Marshall, the yeah. guitar right. amp. Amplifiers, yeah, yeah. Right. The, the Marshall amps were used originally for jazz guitar players to be a little bit louder so you could hear a jazz guitar with a yeah. big band, right? And that's what Jim Marshall, the amps were designed to do that. So you'd plug in a big semi-acoustic guitar and then you could just finally hear the guitar because you couldn't yeah. hear it with all the loud trumpets. Yeah. And then Hendrix came along and discovered if you turn it all up to 11, <laughs> then you change the thing. It sounded terrible. That yes. the Marshall would be like pulling his hair out. This sounds terrible. And then Hendrix would be like, no, watch this. Yeah. And so that was the R. Ah. Exactly. <laughs> Electric guitar with this amp all broken and yeah. slightly distorted. And that's what rock music became. So those amps were not designed initially to do that at all. <laughs> no, you're right. But it's, it's coming back to your point, you don't know. That's the thing. So you no. don't know what the pathway is. You've right. just got to keep going. Right. And then somehow it reveals itself. I don't know how. Yeah, most I, I read recently that Edison created the telephone so that he could listen to the opera without having to go to the opera. <laughs> Some crazy story about that. Not little known fact, not generally publicized, yes. Right? Yeah. So entrepreneurs listening to this, I just say keep a really open mind that somehow spirit or something has had you invent this thing. Yeah. And now you've got a team, you know, hopefully, if you're lucky, to get this thing working. But then realize that the use of it may not be what you think it should be. <laughs> Amazing. And, uh, but you're right. And it will, I would love to spend the rest of, you know, forever just going through this. But, <laughs> but A pleasure. How do people find out more about you online? Because I'm sure um, that, you know, everyone would want to find out everything about you. Well, focus at will.com um, is the, is the uh, sort of the mother load. Uh, and you can easily reach me. I'm Will at focus at will.com and um uh, we're active on social media we have an active facebook page and um i'm always happy to talk to other entrepreneurs about anything that's brilliant and also i would say go to the youtube channel because there's a whole slew of different types of music focusable music and and just try it and listen to it because it is you know, it, it's it's astonishing once you, it's almost like you once you get over the fact that you're listening to music it somehow parks itself in the background right and 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 it's it's it, it's astonishing but but uh, well that's exactly how it's designed to work you don't listen to it just have it fade in the background and get on with your work and then suddenly it's it, it is amazing. but well it's been such a pleasure speaking to you i can't wait to uh, get you back on the show again sometime um, absolutely Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.